In this video, we're going to talk about if-else statements. Today, we will talk about the conditional you will more than likely use most, the if-else statement. The if statement is fairly self-explanatory. If a condition is met, run a set of instructions. Let's start with a simple example. I'm going to set a variable for us to use. So we create a variable called answer that will be an integer and we are currently setting it to one. We can now do a simple if statement like this. The two equal signs together are called the equality operator and they just check to make sure both sides of the condition are equal to each other. So in this case, the variable answer is equal to one and therefore it will display the message the answer is set to one on the screen. Let's run it and test it. And there we go, the answer is set to one. So this example only runs one instruction if the answer is set to one. If we want to run multiple instructions, we have to use curly braces or curly brackets to accomplish that. So I will just take this and cut it for a second put curly braces in there and then you will see that I'll paste that back in and then if I want to do another one and if I run it you'll see both are there so I'm going to delete this sentence here and we will now set this to show one message if the answer is one and a different message if the answer is not one And now if we set the answer to zero and run it, we will see the next message. The answer is not set to one. So a few other operators we can use are the greater than or equal to sign and the less than or equal to sign. So let's say we want to let a student at our school know what grade letter they got. The score they got on their paper was a 50. So let's change the variable name to score and set it to 50. And then we will change our statement to look like this. So if the student has a score between 90 and 100, they will have earned an A. If they have a score between 80 and 89, they have a B. And if they have a score between 70 and 79, they've earned a C. So when we run this, you'll notice that the console is blank. Their score is 50 and none of the conditions evaluate to true. We'll correct that by adding an else statement like this. So if none of these actually evaluate to true, it will default to this else and show these instructions instead. Running that now, you will see the student did earn an F. So even though this video is about if and else, we'll touch on two more operators, the AND operator and the OR operator. So let's clear out the code we have so far and we're going to set up two new variables. And then we're going to set up a new if else statement like so. So for this to evaluate as true, both of these have to be correct. Food has to be ice cream and flavor has to be chocolate. If that's not the case, else, if favorite food is ice cream or favorite food is chicken, then we'll print that's one of my top two favorite foods because ice cream and chicken are my top two favorite foods. If neither of those conditions are met, then it's going to fall down to the default and we just print those are good foods also. So if we run this, we'll see it says that's my favorite also because favorite food is ice cream and favorite flavor is chocolate. But if I change this to vanilla and run it, you'll see ice cream is true, but chocolate is not true. So it goes to the next line if favorite food equals ice cream or favorite food equals chicken and it does equal ice cream, 
it's going to print. That's one of my top two favorite foods, and it does. If we were to change this one here to vanilla cookies and run it, you will now see it says the third one. Those are good foods also because it does not equal ice cream. It does not equal chocolate and it does not equal chicken. So it goes down to the default. Those are good foods also. Finally, I'll show you how to do really short if else statements by using what's called a ternary operator. Take a look at this code, for example. So we set the tickets variable, which is an integer, to one, saying that we have one ticket. Then we set a variable called enough, which is a string, to no. Then we run an if statement. If tickets are greater than one, then we say enough equals yes. Else, which means that tickets are not greater than one, we say enough equals no. So then we print, do we have enough tickets? And then it will say yes or no accordingly. So if we run this, you'll see it says, do we have enough tickets? No, because the tickets are set to one and one is not greater than one, so it goes to no. If we change this to three and run it, it says, do we have enough tickets? Yes. So I'm gonna change this back to one and I'm gonna show you a really short way to do this. We can actually delete all of this right here. And then right here where we have the enough, we will do this. So this says the exact same thing. Do we have enough tickets? If tickets is greater than one, yes. If it is not, no. I'll run this and you will see, do we have enough tickets? No. So this accomplishes the exact same thing, but it's in one line instead of multiple. So you might also enjoy this video right here. And if you're enjoying this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks, and I hope to see you in the next one.